Say that again? Well, well you, you think about, you know, the fact that they lost Chandler Jones. And this was a team that, you know, sp- you know, Kyler Murray started playing well, right, and playing at an MVP level. But then he's come back to earth a little bit as the league is starting to catch up with them. And I think they can't close games out. They don't have that closer, that pass rusher in Chandler Jones, who was one of the best pass rushers in the last five years that nobody talked about. Um, and, you know, I said it before, the attitude of – of of Kyler Murray because when he loses, I don't like the way he carries himself as the CEO of the team. And you know, I got a little backlash, but now that they're starting to lose some games well. that they're supposed to, you know, people are coming back and you know they won't say anything. Um, I think this team is a year away. I think they need to still get some pieces. I think they still need to develop, and, and, and Kyler needs to develop some more. And this defense is going to have to play much better. Simmons is, is was a great pick, and he's starting to step up. But you talk about they're in one of the toughest divisions in all of football, and um, they're taking steps in the right direction, but I just think they're a year away. That they are. Bart and Han, Bart Scott, Allen Han, debuting January 5th, 2021, right here on ESPN Radio from noon to 2 Eastern. Of course, you can also hear it on ESPN+. Plus. And you can hear Bart on Get Up later this morning. Congrats, Bart. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brodies. <laughs> you got it. We'll see you soon. Keyshawn J. Will Zubin presented by Progressive Insurance. Progressive's home quote explorer, changing the way you buy home insurance. Now you can go online, get a custom quote, and save both time and money. Learn more at Progressive.com. Bart joined us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Right. And Jay Wright, Villanova's head coach, will do the same coming up in just about a half hour to talk about where he is, one of the most unique places In all of college basketball, we'll get into the Titans or the Cardinals who have the Rams. We're going to dig into both teams here in just a second. 77% of you have said Cleveland at Sandbell09 just hit us up on the Twitter feed and said, quote, definitely Browns. The Cardinals are ahead of schedule and a year Mm -hmm. away from real contention. I wholeheartedly endorse that for sure. They were playing the long game with an inexperienced coach and an unconventional quarterback, and they are certainly in a good spot. Okay, fellas, here you go. Let me just size up the two teams, and then you guys give me your thoughts when you look at it. Cleveland lost week one to Baltimore 38-6. Everybody's like, same old Browns. And then the Cardinals in week three, after a nice start, lost to the Lions. Lions! And lost to the Panthers in back-to-back weeks. Everybody Uh said, all right, same old Cardinals as well. But they both rebounded in a very nice way. Who needs it more this weekend? I, I, I think it's the Browns, and, and I'll stick with that because when you look at where the Browns are trying to go, right, it, 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 they're, they're there. They're trying to make it to the playoffs for the first time in, like, ever, forever. Oh, two. Oh, yeah, but, like, forever. Right, longest playoff drought Longest drought, haven't won 10 games since 07 or something like that. So mm-hmm. when you look at it, this is the type of game that they've got to have in terms of a signature win. The Cardinals, on the other hand, they, they want to make it to the playoffs, but they're not there yet. They got, a, they got a long ways to go. And I continue to say this all year long, and people thought I was halfway crazy, but I think some are starting to come back around as they're taking a look at it. And look, it, it's one of those deals they both would love to win, but I think the Browns need it more. Well, I think the Cardinals are exceeding expectations. I mean, granted, with the Lions, the Panthers lost back-to-back, but still the way Kyle Murray has played – I think they've had a tremendous year thus far, and I think they'll continue to improve. But I, we never thought that the Cardinals were actually going to win the division. I mean, what has been the narrative with the Browns over the last couple of years? That they've been absolutely loaded with talent, and now you're telling me that OBJ has been out this year, Nick Chubb has been hurt, and they have an 8-3 record. Nick Chubb comes back, they play extremely well. I think the ceiling for the Browns is something that we're all waiting to see. And also people are waiting to see if the Browns brown this game. <laughs> right? Like, it's one of those things where, all right, we're talking them up. This is a big boy opportunity chance for them to get a win against a Titans team that we feel like we know who the Titans are. But we're still waiting to see if the Browns can reach that peak potential. And I'm curious, and I think that comes from Baker Mayfield. I know that Kevin Stefanski, the game isn't built around him throwing the ball. But if they get down in this game, I would love to see Baker Mayfield win a game for them using his arm like I saw him do against the Bengals. 17 years, man. 2002. Mm-hmm. Browns haven't been to the playoffs. Longest in the league, as I mentioned. The Cardinals have been to the playoffs. They, it, it, it's, they need it. They were on the brink of the Super Bowl like five years ago exactly. when they lost to the Cayman Company. If the Browns, for some reason, don't make the playoffs, it's going to get ugly in Cleveland. Those people in Cleveland are going to go crazy. They're going to go crazy. The, the mere thought of me probably saying that and them listening, they're probably just like, oh, no, don't say, don't miss the playoffs. What a jinx. 
But I'm start is... telling you, it's set up perfectly for this, right? Everybody's talking about the run game coming into this one. Oh, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. Oh, Derrick Henry, he's a beast, you know? But it's going to come down to Baker Mayfield and Ryan Tannehill. Like, who can make more plays? And I think that narrative continues to build as we watch Baker. Hopefully, I want to see him ascend. I want to see him become what we think he could. Maybe he never becomes that key. Maybe he's always going to be a serviceable quarterback that has to manage the game with the run game that Kevin Stefanski wants. I'm just, there's a part of me that wants to see Baker take it to another level. Well, the part of you is caught up. And you caught up in where he was drafted. And you caught up in the commercials. And you caught up in the wide open offense at Oklahoma. I'm caught up in getting the W's. That's the, because what has happened, and I said this before, is there's this narrative that's set that you got to do certain things because you're the number one overall pick. No. Win the game, man. However you win it, don't lose it for me. Don't turn the ball over. I don't need him to throw the ball all over the lot. I just need him to do exactly what he's doing to get me to nine and three. I don't want to get caught up in the statistical game with him. Just be that serviceable guy. Don't fumble the snap. Don't get a ball to the other color. That's all I care about. I'm not about. saying I expect him to throw for 400 yards. I'm just saying that sometimes when the running game gets hindered, can Baker Mayfield make plays? Like, that's, don't, but that's not to be a one-dimensional team. I understand. He's been, he's been making plays. He's been making crisp plays to help them win the game. He doesn't need to make 20 of those anymore. He just needs to make four, maybe five. That's it. There's a limit. That's, that's it. And I mean, when I mean plays, I mean third and five, we need you to make that play to keep that drive going. You know, second and 13, I need you to cut that in half to keep the drive going. One thing I would just quickly mention with regards to the Browns, we had Tony Rizzo from our great affiliate in Cleveland on about a week and a half ago, and he says fans are bullish, they're optimistic, but I'm with Jay. There's a fatalistic feel until you actually do it. And by the way, there are many people in the organization that wanted to hire Kevin Stefanski the year they hired Freddie Kitchens. Jeez, always mm. for the Browns, a mm. day and a dollar Isn't late. Your, mm. But think about I that. Mean, coach. They finally did, apparently, get it right. So who needs a win more? Is it Cleveland or is it Arizona? Hit us up, 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-SAY-ESPN. 729-3776, or if it's easier for you, Key J and Z on Twitter. On the other side, Key, you've got a very interesting point on the Arizona Cardinals, their losses, but it's who their losses came against that is really piquing your interest. Well, you know, I, I obviously I've been sitting around and I was thinking about these things over the last several days about what type of team Arizona really truly is, and they're going up against a Ram team and a Jared Goff uh, turnover machine. Jared Goff has never really had back-to-back -back stinker, so I don't expect for him to have one against the Arizona Cardinals. And when you look at uh, Sean McVay, he's 6-0 and lifetime against the Cardinals. So I started looking at those things, and I went all the way back to their schedule, and I said, okay, they lost to Detroit. Okay. Uh, they didn't get blew out. They just lost. But Matt Patricia was the coach, mm -hmm. a defensive-minded coach. And then mm -hmm. I looked down the line. I said, okay, they beat Matt Rule, offensive-minded coach of Carolina, but then they got to Brian Flores. They lost. He had a nice game, but they still lost to the Dolphins, defensive-minded head coach, calls the defense. Then I look at Seattle. I say, well, Pete Carroll and them, they put the, took him to the woodshed, beat him up pretty good. Then I got down. Well, they split with Seattle. It, but then I look at the Buffalo game prior to the Seattle game, and I said to myself, I go, okay, Buffalo had him under 200 yards throwing. Mm -hmm. If they don't allow him to get on the perimeter to throw the ball to DeAndre Hopkins on the Hail Mary and they keep him within the pocket, he's under 200 yards and they lose that football game. However, they still won it. The win is a win is a win. I'm just looking at how. Then I say Seattle – Carlos Dunlap, Jamal Adams, those guys are back. They're now rallying the troops and bringing the heat. They take care of business against him. He goes on the road to New England. Bill Belichick, his defense, corrals him, keeps him inside where he can't see when he throws the ball. Therefore, it bounces off helmets, it's interceptions. They didn't let him, let him get on the perimeter. Go all the way back to Detroit. And they, when you're a defensive-minded coach or a coach in general, you're looking at the best plays against your opponent. Where do you get those from? You get them from the guys that played them previously. And so as you start to look at it, things started changing. It got worse as it went on. And then last week against New England, it got really bad. 
And so now I'm sitting there, I'm going, okay, he's got to play against the Rams. Now, Rams, is you the head coach is an offensive-minded coach. The head coach does not touch the defense. He stays in the offensive room, and that is Sean McVay. Because Brandon Staley, who's the defensive coordinator, who has the Rams as a third-ranked defense, according to many in the National Football League from a statistical standpoint, it's like, okay, he's getting ready to go up against a real defense with Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and Brockers and all these dudes. Did they crack the code? Did it start with Matt? Or did it start with uh, uh, Patricia and end with Bill Belichick? And now the Rams are going to continue it. A ton more with regards to blitzing. That's where the biggest number is with Murray. They weren't blitzing that much earlier in the season. But if you take a look at the percentage of blitzes that DCs have dialed up in the last several weeks, that number is shooting sky high on Kyler Murray. And when you blitz him, as long as you maintain the pocket, you can blitz him and don't let him get out on the outside and you collapse that pocket and make him throw